What's happening, Boot Junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on Home Studio Setup for VoiceOver. And today, we're gonna talk about these acoustic panels from a company called Bubos. Bubos sent me a bunch of acoustic panels to treat my spare bedroom and try and turn it into a like a streaming studio, a studio for webinars, that, that type of thing. Uh, and they said that they've got, they sent me a bunch of treatment to see if it works. So we're gonna talk about the acoustic treatment that Bubo sent over, and we'll sort of go into the specifications of it. And all the time we're gonna be talking in this treated space, so you can decide if it's doing a sufficient job. So this is what it sounds like with no acoustic treatment. And I wanna do this beforehand so that we can have an example of how it sounds once we have the treatment in place. I'm using a Rode VideoMic NTG USB microphone. So something that you would typically use in uh, online training, online webinars, not a voiceover studio per se, but if you're trying to create uh, a connection with the camera without having a microphone in your face, a really close shotgun microphone. So this is only about this far away from my mouth, just off camera, I have it here so that you can see it. But this is the kind of microphone that is gonna be really forgiving of a bad room. Bad room, a room that doesn't have any acoustic treatment. None of the walls, nothing has any treatment on it. The only thing we have doing any kind of, I don't know, diffusion or absorption is we have a bookshelf with some stuff in it here, and we've got a bed back over here. <laughs> We've got you know, a regular twin bed, and those are all the acoustic panels. These rectangular panels, we've got 24 of these square panels, and these will go up on the ceiling over where I'm going to work. And we have these art panels, and there's six of these, and these will form a mural on the wall. So all of that treatment together, we'll put all over the, all over the room to just sort of create a, a, a treated bedroom home office space. So let's see how it sounds. So what's acoustic treatment for? Why do we hang this stuff on the wall? Why does Amazon sell all that like egg crate looking stuff? What is this stuff supposed to do? Well, the purpose of the acoustic treatment is to try and minimize the sound of the room itself when you're speaking in the room. And what that means is as you speak, your, your voice bounces off all the surfaces and some of those reflections, some of those echoes, some of that reverberation ends up coming into the microphone and you get a sense of the room that you're in. And the more you can diminish that sound, the clearer your voice will be, the more easy it is to listen to your voice, the more, the less fatiguing it will be for somebody who's listening to you over a longer period of time. If you've ever watched videos where somebody is standing very far from the camera and they're just using the on-camera microphone and you just hear all this reverb and echo and it just makes it very difficult to hear and to understand, that's what we're trying to eliminate. And so we turn to acoustic treatment to try and make our room sound better by diminishing that echo, by increasing the amount of signal, that's our voice, and diminishing the amount of noise, in this case, the reverberation or reflection. Now you notice I said reverberation and reflection from noise. What these panels don't do is they don't soundproof in any way. You could plaster your walls with this stuff and you're still gonna hear the neighbors next door. You're still gonna hear the people above you. Noise is still gonna come in through the windows and through the door and through the wall. These don't do anything from a sound proofing perspective. All they do is they try and make the sound in the room sound a little bit better by reducing the amount of reflection. So before we get into the, the, the sound quality, a couple of other things to note about these panels. Um, one is a lot of times when you get things from, the, from a factory, um, they will have a smell. And sometimes those, that smell can be um, stuff that you don't actually wanna inhale, VOCs, volatile organic compounds, stuff that you don't wanna, you don't wanna inhale. It could be chemicals, manufacturing chemicals, chemicals from packaging, preservatives to try and make it so that when it goes on the ship across the ocean, it, you know, the, the rats don't eat it. Um, but these panels, there's no discernible smell to them whatsoever. 
they are completely neutral. It's like smelling nothing. That was, that was really gratifying when I pulled them out of the package that they had no smell to them whatsoever. They are dense. As you can see, there's very little flex, flex to them. These are dense for their size, although they're not particularly heavy, but they are, they are somewhat, somewhat dense, durable. That's what I'd say. They're, they're durable. They're not going to tear as soon as you take them off the wall. Um, they're not going to dent or deform easy. Like you can press on them pretty hard and they're not going to leave dents. These are, are, are reasonably high density. Um, the other thing it says in the, in the description is these are fire retardant. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal because a lot of times the stuff that you're putting on your walls, if you're getting just some of this foam where you don't know where it comes from, they often can be fire accelerants. So if you're a smoker and an ash gets on them, they can go up. If there's a spark, sometimes they can go up. These, Bubo says these are fire resistant, fire retardant. They're not an accelerant. Now, these panels are stuck to the wall per the manufacturer's instruction. I just used double-sided tape. So I went to Home Depot and got double-sided tape, sticky on one side, Teflon on the other. You peel it off and you stick them to the wall. They suggest putting in like a, a five pattern and you just stick it to the wall. Now, what I did is I didn't want to stick that tape. That tape can be pretty high adhesive. I didn't stick that directly to the wall. I put masking tape on the wall first, like painter's tape, this just masking tape, uh, because sometimes this tape can pull the paint off when you go to remove it, or it can leave its foam on the wall. And if you rent a place, anything like that, you don't want to leave that sticky stuff behind. So if you put a little bit of masking tape on the wall, but if it's held up just fine. That's been up there for about a week now with no issues, no issues whatsoever. So I do recommend that if you do stick it to the wall, put a little tape underneath the double-sided tape. They also say you can use a nail gun. I, I wouldn't put a bunch of holes. I wouldn't nail this. I wouldn't nail this to the wall. This wall, let me get you a little bit closer. This wall shows their art panels. So in addition to the, the square panels, the hexagonal panels, the rectangular panels that you saw, you can also get these larger square panels. And they've got a variety of dis different designs that you, can, that you can put on the wall. So if you did wanna have this as a backdrop, you could have this, this image. And there's a variety of different images on their website. I will say that the image isn't quite as contrasty as it would be, as it looked on the website. These are kind of gray, a little bit washed out, but it's printed over these white panels. It's, it's reasonably high resolution. You can't see the pixels. They're not jagged when you get up close to it. Um, you just see, it's just not the, the printing isn't super rich. That's what they look like. Those are, uh, that's about 72 inches across just to get a, a sense of the size. But that is six panels, six panels. Now, lastly, sound quality. Do they do their job? Eh, yeah, they mostly do their job. They kind of do their job. I would say that the drawback to these panels, if I, if I had a drawback, I would say that these panels, they're not thick enough. They don't really do a great job at the thing they're really supposed to do, and that's absorb the echo to, to prevent that echo from coming back. So this is what it sounds like with no acoustic treatment. And I want to do this beforehand so that we can have an example of how it sounds once we have the treatment in place. And I think it's because they're just not thick enough. I would think that these would need to be two inches, three inches, four inches. Downstairs in my studio, it's there. My, my panels are four inches thick and in my booth, they're six inches thick to try and avoid, try and absorb as much of that echo as you can. Now, there are other people that have this setup with, with this much acoustic treatment and you can absorb some of that additional reverb with post-processing. You can get like isotope plugins and de-reverb plugins and that's fine for something like YouTube for pre-recorded stuff, so far as I know, those de-reverbers don't work great in real time. So if you're trying to do live streaming, if you're trying to do webinars, it might not work quite as well. Certainly would require a lot of additional uh, processing horsepower. 
But if you're going to spend money on panels to reduce reverb, you shouldn't also need to de-reverb in software. And so I think I would certainly like to have seen these do a better job. You might be able to get a little additional performance on, on the panels if you have them if you have them stand off from the wall a little bit, usually the thickness of the panel, you can you can almost double their effectiveness by putting an air gap behind it. That can help, but still with the thinness of this panel, it's just not going to absorb low enough frequency. So our the mid-range of our voice is going to still, you hear it, it's still reflecting. The deepest part of our voice is still reflecting. It's only attenuating just the highest frequencies, and that's because they're so thin. Bass and low mid-range, it just needs thickness. It needs thickness in order to do its job. It's just a, a fact of the matter. But if you are looking for something that could serve as a backdrop for your studio, for your YouTube studio, for your streaming studio, to improve the sound of your webinars just a little bit without having these huge intrusive things on the wall, they do have a certain aesthetic look to it. Maybe you like the way it looks. Like I said, there's white panels, there's gray panels, there's black panels, there's the colored panels. There's lots of different options from, from Bubos. So I hope that helps. You've now seen how much acoustic treatment there is in this regular bedroom, just a 10 by 12 bedroom, that if you, if you are trying to you know, conduct trainings out of a room, if you're trying to hold webinars out of your room, if you're trying to you know, do YouTube talking head style videos, you can decide if this is enough. I will say that if this is not enough for you, if this is still too reverby for you, then what you need is you need to get thicker, more dense panels. Don't go with that egg crate foam stuff. That's only gonna work as well as this and even not as good as this. You need thicker, heavier panels. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope that helps. I wanna say thanks to the folks over at Bubos for sending these to me. Just giving you my honest opinion and letting these panels speak for themselves. You've heard how they perform. You can decide if it's right for you. But a great big thank you to the folks over at Bubos for sharing it with me. I really appreciate it. Now, that's all I have for you today. Get out there, get yourself a microphone, maybe a little USB shotgun microphone here like this Rode VideoMic NTG. NTG VideoMic? VideoMic NTG. Anyway, this USB microphone, but get yourself a microphone and get yourself into a nice treated room so you sound as good as you can sound. But get out there, record something amazing. Thanks, we'll talk to you next time. Take care.